Hi, I'm Deepa Sampatu from Jasper Design Automation. Uh, let's take a look at how Jasper's dedicated app for sequential equivalence checking can help reduce weeks of simulation time. So, uh, how do you define equivalence check-in? Given that there are two versions of a design, maybe this just two different versions or new logic added uh, or any changes made to the existing logic, how do you verify that they functionally behave exactly the same? So this functional equivalence can be in expressed in terms of combinational equivalence checking or sequential equivalence checking, depending on the kind of design. Combinational equivalence checking is applicable when you have two designs where you expect um, the, the state elements, uh, every state element in the two designs to be equal. So this is more applicable when they are state matching. You use sequential equivalence checking when not essentially every state element is equal in the two designs, but eventually you expect all the signals at the interface to be equivalent. Uh, the, the sequential equivalence checking problem is, a, is more com complex when compared to combinational equivalence checking. So let's see some of the applications where SEC is commonly used at. You may require repartitioning of a design, but no lo new logic introduced at all. It's exactly the same logic, but you just start dividing the existing design. Um, here it's uh, enough to just check for combinational equivalence checking. Or you may have introduced some logic optimization, um, maybe because of uh, retiming requirements. Uh, you still want to make sure that the two designs uh, are functionally equivalent. Or you may have completely different implementations of the same design, two different algorithms essentially performing the same functionality. Um, or you may have low power optimizations introduced with clock gating or power domain changes. Or you may have um, two power intent modules for the same design. Um, and you still want to make sure that they are functionally equivalent. There may be new features that you add to your existing design, and you want to make sure that the backward compatibility is still retained. Or there may be some ECO insertion, uh, typically at the gate level during the end of your uh, design cycle. And uh, you would want to make sure that the design still performs good, even when the ECO is disabled. So here's one of the applications that we just spoke about. I would call it power aware ver verification because you have the design and you have the design with the power intent modules and uh, you leave the in inputs unconstrained and you check for the outputs to be matching. Or uh, in cases where you have your design and you introduce some new features, you add new features, make some changes to the logic and uh, you still want to make sure that they are backward compatible, and as I mentioned earlier, you leave the inputs unconstrained and you check for the equivalence at the outputs. So the bottom line here is that as your design matures, there's more possibility that you may require to add some new features or uh, make changes to your design, uh, but at all times, you want to make sure that your design is backward compatible and also functionally equivalent to your existing design. And SEC can help you reduce a lot of time involved in, in such verification. Here's how the SEC app flow looks like, uh, quite straightforward. Uh, you, you do this setup, which is very simple. And uh, there's also mapping of the inputs, the outputs, the black box inputs and the black box outputs maybe other kinds of signals as well if required. You load one version of the design to the tool, you load the other version of the design to the tool, and the SEC app takes care of generating all the required assertions and assumptions. Um, these can be reused many times uh, as you keep making more fixes or more changes to your existing design. Uh, you check if the outputs are equivalent in both the designs, and if yes, you're good, you're done. Uh, if not, you can make use of Jasper's debug capability, the waveform viewer, and um, be able to point out where the uh, mismatch came from. So you may need to add new constraints or fix, uh, it may be a setup issue, or you may have to fix your design uh, in case it's a design bug. This is how the SEC app GUI looks like. Um, it's very apt for this use case uh, because you have two versions of the design. You want to be able to 
look at both versions of the design simultaneously many times. Uh, so you have uh, a hierarchy browser, a source browser over here. You have the signal mapping table and the property table around here. And you, you see all the mappings uh, specific to the design or the module that you've uh, selected here in the source browser. Uh, we also have a bunch of filters here. You can select if you want to be able to just see the inputs or the outputs or the black box inputs or black box outputs or undrivens, et cetera. Uh, and you also have the source browser for both the reference design and the variation of it. Uh, so you, you'd be able to look at it side by side. Let's take a look at one of the case studies of uh, our customers, how they've been able to successfully deploy SEC across all their designs. Um, so to give you some background, uh, this customer is involved in developing high volume graphics design products. Uh, so a lot of times uh, they have a variety of um, product derivatives of their end product. So they may have to add some additional features every now and then, and they still want to make sure that the backward compatibility is maintained um, with the core logic. And they also had to introduce some clock gating uh, logic in order to reduce the dynamic power consumption. Um, and here's how they did the equivalence checking before they started using SEC. They had to run test bin simulation for uh, f up to five days on big machines, which is a lot of resources. And uh, with Jasper's SEC-based uh, solution, they were able to reduce the time involved uh, drastically. So they were able to successfully replace their existing uh, simulation methodology uh, for verifying all their uh, clock gating fixes or introducing chicken bits or um, any timing fixes or power optimizations uh, with SEC app, which is uh, formal based and exhaustive. So this way they were able to replace these uh, five day weekly regressions with uh, just 45 minutes of verifying when they were able to use uh, SEC app. So here's some of the benefits uh, reported from the user in using SEC app. Uh, there was a huge improved time to market. Um, there was a drastic improvement in throughput given that they only required 45 minutes when compared to five days of simulation. Um, also increased quality whenever they introduced a new feature or um, made some changes to their design. They just had to run uh, the SEC app quickly, the setup is quick, and make sure that all the outputs match. Um, also, it results in higher confidence given that SEC is formal verification based. Uh, even with a good coverage uh, in your simulation, you may not, be, you may not have uh, covered those coordinate cases, whereas with SEC, you don't have to worry about that because of how exhaustive it is. So the bottom line here is that the SEC app maximizes ROI when compared to the other um, methodologies available uh, to do your verification. So here's another slide from um, one, a pre paper that was presented by NVIDIA uh, at one of Jasper's user group meetings. Basically, they had uh, chips divided into multiple units, subunits, and each unit or the subunit had to be evaluated for uh, clock gating optimizations. They had about roughly about 50 setups, and each setup took about 15 to 20 minutes, which is very fast. Uh, this uh, flow was run by about 20 engineers, and one of the main things they noticed was the ease with setup, and the users were uh, trained in a very short time. The verification time here was about <coughs> one to three weeks. Uh, they would find failures at the outputs and uh, debug them with the waveform viewer and just add new constraints or uh, fix your d design bugs. So this way, uh, they were able to find about uh, more than 40 bugs when they were uh, almost done with their simulation uh, with a high coverage, which is about 50% of the total bugs that they found. So what I would like to highlight here is uh, the productivity uh, because of the highly automated flow and the reusability of the flow once you set it up and also your increased confidence in the quality given that you were able to find so many bugs 
even after you thought you were completely done with simulation. So here's a summary of um, some of the advantages of uh, the SEC app. Uh, it eliminates uh, the need for weeks of regression time, as we saw in one of the user cases before. Uh, they were able to replace five days worth of simulation time with just 45 minutes when they started to use SEC app. Uh, we've also seen that the SEC app is almost 10 times faster when compared to the other competitor tools that are available for the same purpose. Also, you can use SEC app at uh, chip level, not just like a, at a sub-module level, uh, subsystem level, or at system level, but uh, we've seen users using it at the entire chip level. Uh, so the optimized workflow GUI uh, and the dedicated waveform viewer for the SEC app helps reduce the verification time uh, given how um, easy it is to do the setup and also the debugging because of uh, you being able to view uh, two source browsers, uh, etc. So that concludes our presentation for today. Thank you.